is the ultimate goal of AI to create machines that think, I know that's a problematic word, but that think <laughs> like the human brain? <laughs> I think there are many approaches to that. One is, yeah, sure, let's take the brain and simulate the brain and see what happens. Another is, let's mimic the brain and do certain things like the brain. There's a good analogy with, you know, birds and flying planes. So we don't really want, we want to fly, but we really don't want to fly like birds, but we want to fly. And we have managed to fly quite well with airplanes. And so we, we might want to go to somewhere where there is intelligence uh, without actually going through the brain route. We can go there some other way. And I think these methods we see flourish nowadays. They are an example of that because our brain doesn't work exactly like that. Very crudely, yeah, you could say that, you know, in our brains we have neurons and we're, we're modeling something or using methods that are inspired by how our brain works, but it's not really how the brain works. However, these methods might be extremely good at some things, even better than our brain, and it's showing to, to be. So what's what's better than what our human brains can do well computers with the proper training um, can be used to detect patterns in ways that we humans are not able to um, because of its sheer complexity so you can see some methods based uh, that are um, made for image recognition or facial recognition uh, being used for other things like detecting cancer so when people say it's just for facial recognition, well, no, you can actually use it for other things as well. So this, this field of um, image recognition is really more broad than people think. So you, you, you've probably seen the, the Go um, the story where AlphaGo uh, wins over um, the human. Which is a, was, was the last game that supposedly computers would never be able to beat humans at, right? I mean, you know, right. hum, human, I mean, com, uh, and it's, computers conquered chess, but then Go was supposed to be this thing that the, the computers couldn't go there. But. but come on, it's not really that surprising that computers surpass humans in that game, I think, because the game is finite, it's combinatorial, you can search through a lot of things, and you can recognize certain patterns. So uh, to me, that is not surprising. I think it's a wonderful and remarkable result, an amazing result, but it's not really that surprising that we can do that. So, so computers are much better than people at digesting, I'll say, a lot of data, and as Roger said, seeing patterns in it, and they can also be used, as happened in Go, to try things over repeatedly and learn from the data that they generate themselves, which they can do very well for, um, for games, but it's much harder to do for the real world. Uh, I, wanted, I just wanted to go back to um, something that Roger was saying and, and note that there really, um, you asked about goals for AI. So we like to think about two different kinds of goals for the field. One is a scientific goal of understanding what the kinds of behaviors that are thought to be intelligent in people, and the other is an engineering goal. And the techniques you use so far as we know now, could be rather different for those two goals. So the methods that are making a big difference in image processing now um, are wonderful for engineering. It's not clear they're really shedding light on um, how we think or on cognitive behavior, and that's fine. I mean, we, AI is making a huge difference in the world um, with some of the um, both image processing and language work. 